Welcome to Savvy Business, Life Unscripted, with your host, Christina Rivera, where our guests share their wisdom and valuable business tips, empowering our audience to expand their personal potential. Hello, Dr. Terry Fossum. Welcome to Savvy Broadcasting, Life Unscripted. I'm so grateful to have you here this wonderful afternoon. How are you? I'm great. Thank you for having me. Oh my gosh, thank you for coming on out. You're going to talk about something I never even knew was a problem, which I'm sure a lot of our listeners didn't realize is an issue for our wonderful pets, and that is canine dementia disorder. Um, and, you know, I'm like, duh, well, if pets can get cancer. Why can't they get dementia? So you're going to share the research you've done over the years on that. And you've also created a supplement to help our pets with that very issue. But before we go to all those wonderful details. You are a veterinarian surgeon. Just share, how did you get into the animal industry and becoming a vet? How did that all work out for you? Uh, you know what? Um, that's a great question. I grew up on a ranch. I always knew that I wanted to be a veterinarian, but quite honestly, I thought I'd be a large animal veterinarian. And then I got started in veterinary school and I loved surgery and there was just a lot more I could do as a small animal surgeon. So I did a year internship after veterinary school and then three years of a residency and then became what's considered to be board certified. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so I've been, I've been a surgeon, seems like you know, forever, but <laughs> 35 plus years. Um, mm -hmm. But I write the book that called Small Animal Surgery that is used around the world. And, and so uh, I've had this opportunity to travel and lecture it's about everywhere in the world, which has been really awesome. Yeah, well, it does sound awesome. You know, my husband, two years ago, or maybe three years now, had hip surgery, and I was just blown away what modern medicine can do in the line of surgery. And I could see why you chose that direction to go into because it makes such an impact to people's quality of life when, say, their hip is out or the dog's hip, and you can fix that problem and, and in, just increase their quality of life so much. Absolutely. Yeah. It's always a joy. And, and, you know, clients who bring dogs in that need or cats that need something done are usually really, really nice people. Mm -hmm. So it's a pleasure to work with them. Yeah. Now, how did you begin to work on and research dementia for pets? And did you realize it was a problem when you got started? Or did you begin to see in your practice, a lot of dogs coming in with the problem? How did that work? You know, so I started Dr. Fossum's Pet Care because I have an older dog. I have an 11 year old Labrador who's the love of my life, the best dog ever. We tell him that every day. <laughs> and um, he's laying actually laying right beside me. And um, I was looking for things that would help him. He has a condition called elbow dysplasia, which is a, a, a condition he was born with that causes the elbow to get osteoarthritis. And so as he got older, he was lame. And so I started looking for something that wasn't a non-steroidal, which he did not tolerate well. And I ran across CBD and didn't like what I saw out there for, for sale. There are a lot of fraudulent products out there. So I decided mm -hmm. to start Dr. Foston's Pet Care. And then as we have been growing, I keep looking for what I would consider to be unmet medical niches. So Canine cognitive dysfunction is certainly one of those. It's a disease that we estimate affects somewhere between 14 and 35% of dogs. But quite honestly, it's probably a lot more than that because mm -hmm. like you said, most people don't even think about it. As their dogs get older, they start to show mm -hmm. some signs that we would recognize as you know, cognitive decline. But the owners might think it's just normal aging. And so it never gets reported. So I think, you know, 35% is probably a low estimate of the number of dogs who get this. Mm -hmm. and, and the issue is that in some cases, it really decreases the quality of life for both the owner and the pet. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we see the most commonly is that people will go come in and they'll say, oh, my dog now walks around all night, he vocalizes at night. He's restless, he's panting, and I can't sleep. He doesn't sleep. He sleeps during the day, but I can't <laughs> sleep at night. And so it, it it's, becomes a real problem. And of course, you know, if they forget, you know, they're, that they're house trained, they start having accidents in the house, that's very mm -hmm. bothersome. So this is not 
a, a sort of whatever kind of disease. It's actually really important to the owner yeah. and to the pet as far as quality of life. Wow, this is interesting for me because my beautiful Henry here is uh, t 10 years old and he has just started doing not straight up like wee wee around the house, but little, little puddles. And I'm like, well, where is that coming from? He's looking at us like, what? I'm like, dude, you don't do this in the house. You've never done this since you were a pup. So I, this might be the beginnings of what you're talking about, actually. It well might be. It might. So the two, the most common, the most common complaint we get, I don't know if it's really the most common thing that people notice. Mm -hmm. the most common complaint is this restlessness at night. Um, and then urinating and defecating mm -hmm. inappropriately, they become more anxious and they actually mm -hmm. become less interactive. They oftentimes just don't have that same level of engagement with their owner. Well, wow. you know, you mentioned something very interesting and my, my husband and I noticed this. He never used to be, Henry, uh, nervous in storms. And now when there's a storm, he is totally freaking out. Never did it as a pup or an adult dog. But now it's just like, oh my gosh, the world is crushing in on him. And we're like, what's wrong with you? Wow. So I need to get me some of your supplement here. <laughs> you know, um, we put together a, a survey. We just did this um, last couple of days that owners can take that will, you know, they can answer questions and it will tell them whether or not from the results of that, it looks like your dog does have canine cognitive dysfunction. So yeah. we'll have to, we'll send that your way, Christina, and you can yeah. take it and yeah, yeah, we'll make sure that. any of your, your listeners that want to Take mm -hmm. it can do that as well because I think it is helpful. Like I said, the signs can be subtle, mm -hmm. but and they creep up on you know people, and so they they just go, oh, it's just getting old. Well, not necessarily. Yeah. And I kind of, you know, a lot of people say that even my doctor have said to me when I started getting joint pain, oh, it's just old age. And I'm yeah. thinking to myself, well, like with pets and our own health, you know, maybe you want to try to stave that off and not have those symptoms because I don't think it has to be with old age. What can we do to ensure our dogs don't have these type of symptoms or dementia going forward in later life? Is there anything we can do? Yeah. So um, we can talk about reversing signs and actually the good news is that dogs are more responsive to treatment and they, their signs actually reverse better than people. So I should back up and say that Canine cognitive dysfunction, or CCD, whatever we want to call it, or doggy dementia, is really very similar to Alzheimer's disease mm. in people. Um, they, we get, they, dogs get the same plaques in their brain. They get disturbances in the vasculature in their brain. Uh, so probably, you know, these diseases, if not identical, are at least pretty similar. Um, so there's a, been a lot of thought that we should use dogs as a model for understanding Alzheimer's disease. The good news though, is that like, well, good news, bad news, depending on which size you're on, but dogs do respond to uh, supplements. They respond more to things like diet and, you know, environmental enrich enrichment mm -hmm. um, for, for the supplements, you know, antioxidants, phospholipids, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. um, have been shown to be a benefit in dogs with CCD. So it may not cure them, but it will usually help them tremendously. And we have owners that say, you know, that after a week or two weeks, although we usually say, give it at least eight weeks, um, their dogs are better. They quit, they start sleeping through the night again, and, you know, they're ex extremely happy. Does it help every dog? Uh, no, I doubt it. Yeah. Um, and our product's new, so we're still learning. We do have a, a study Mm -hmm. ongoing um that we are just now enrolling dogs in so hopefully within the next three months or so we'll have some preliminary results from that study but so far the we have a, a board certified neurosurgeon and uh neuromedicine he's double boarded he's doing the study for us and so so far he says things look great Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much, Henry. We're just peeping it, uh, piping in here a little bit. <laughs> yes, he agrees with you. Yes. No, no absolutely. But Give me some of that. <laughs> yeah. So I'm really happy to hear that about dogs that we can reverse that. And there's an option for us to uh, counteract this. Sorry, Henry, I didn't mean to hurt you. <laughs> um, so, but, um, so that's great to hear. And I'm glad that it's fairly quick for dogs. Now you mentioned dietary things. Is there a specific diet that works best to kind of prevent some of this negative results and, you know? 
Yeah, well, so um, there actually are a couple diets that have been formulated for aging dogs to improve brain health. Um, Purina has one, Hills has one. Um, but the most part, what those diets have is additional antioxidants and phospholipids. What is phospholipids? I never heard of that word. Um, so they're like, they're fatty substances. So for example, you've probably heard um, for your brain health or for your heart health, you should take omega-3 fatty acids. Okay? Mm -hmm. So we do know that phospholipids protect cell membranes in the brain and probably elsewhere, the heart, et cetera. So mm -hmm. when we put our, what, so what we did when we were putting this together, our product together is we said, what products that are out there have been shown both Western conventional medicine and Eastern medicine have been shown to potentially have some benefit with CCD. Mm. And then we talk to the people who are typically treating these, which do tend to be the neurologists. And we said, you know, which of these would you give? And their response was, you know what? I'd ask my owners to give all of these if they could. But, you know, who's going to go out and buy 11 different ingredients, mix it together, and, you know, <laughs> every day? And it's just not feasible. So that's what we did is we said, okay, we'll take all 11 of these ingredients. Some are Chinese herbs. Some are more conventional Western medicine. And we're going to combine them in an easy to administer capsule so that we can start treating some of these dogs. The thing that surprised me actually when we first came out is that I we, we typically think of you know canine cognitive dysfunction as being more common in small breed dogs. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe that's just because they live longer and mm -hmm. so people notice it more. But um, we start getting a lot of requests for older dogs. So we're just now coming out with a formula for, I mean, for bigger dogs, not for older, but for dogs that are, you know, like yeah. my Labrador. Yeah, um, yeah. So we're, we're just coming out with that. Well, that's great to hear. My uh, dog growing up was a German Shepherd and he had had a stroke when he was hit 10 years old and unfortunately then had to be put down. So I don't know if he had a cognitive disorder that up until that point just resulted in a stroke. And then, you know, the, the doctor had told us when he looked at our dog, Rexy, that, you know, basically if he comes out of this, he's going to be either a vegetable or, or really have poor quality of life. And it, yeah. be it becomes really hard, um, you know, so I'm so glad that this exists. It's called CogniCaps. Uh, how Cogni can people caps. get, yeah, how do people get started and using it? They can go to your website or? They can. Our website is www.dr, for Dr. Fossums, F-O-S-S-U-M-S dot com. And okay. we have, we have our CogniCaps product on there. We have a, a wound therapy, um, Manuka honey product that has cannabinoids in it. We have CBD, which you know, if, if anxiety is the only issue, we have had a number of dogs that have responded to our, our hep extract product um, and become substantially less anxious. Like I have a, I have a very, one of my best friends has Yorkies uh -huh. and she, I keep telling her this is not the way to give this, but she keeps giving it like minutes before one of her York, Yorkies is going to get excited because um, she can tell, like she knows somebody's going to come to the house. Yeah. She'll just give it right before and she says it helps. But generally, these are products that, you know, you should take on a more regular basis. You know, like we usually recommend twice a day mm -hmm. and for a week or at least two weeks before an event that you know is going to cause anxiety, like Fourth of July, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Well, we can't. Um, Henry here gets really anxious during thunderstorms. We can't quite predict that. Um, <laughs> but I like the cognitive caps because I think if this is something as, as a result of his declining mental state, I'd love to keep him around in, in good quality health. So I'm so grateful you shared that with our audience today. Everyone go to drfossums.com today and find out how you can help your dog. Is, uh, is your office nearby if anyone wants to bring their pets in, if they have any issues with their pet, need surgery? Yeah, I'm actually in the process of building two new specialty hospitals in the Phoenix area. So right now I don't have a clinic. Okay. Um, but people email me all the time and I'm, I'm constantly responding to questions. So feel okay. free, you know, 
anybody that wants to email me is terry t-e-r-r-y at drfossums.com Awesome. Well, Dr. Fossum, I just have to thank you again for this wonderful interview and wisdom. I know you're going to help a lot of pet owners out there. And Henry, thanks you too. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Well, I hope you do help and thank you. That's why we do what we do. Have a great weekend. You too. Like, subscribe, and share this episode. To listen to more savvy episodes and savvy biz tips, go to www.lifeunscriptedradio.com. To find out about our paid sponsorship opportunities or how to become a guest, email Christina at lifeunscriptedradio.com.